Hi, I'm Simon from Sailing Britican. We demonstrate what it's like to live on a boat and today we're going to go through about batteries and battery maintenance. So this is Aaron from Clarity Marine here in Grenada. Do you want to just uh, tell a little bit about yourself? Wife and daughter and I have been living on a sailboat um, in the Caribbean for the past four years. We've been cruising for longer than that, I think seven, including our previous boat. And um, we are now calling Grenada home. I'm a certified marine electrician and I'm just having a lot of fun helping people here in Grenada and throughout the Caribbean design better systems and fix the systems that they have. Okay, Aaron, um, this is our battery bank. It's um, lithium and we have one starter battery for our generator. Now, a lot of people are scared and a bit just forget about batteries. How, what's the best way to handle them and work with them? Right, so there's no need to, to be afraid of them, but you certainly have to respect them. Um, um, as long as you're not touching both the positive and the negative, it's kind of like an outlet on your wall. Yeah. Um, it's actually okay if you're, I don't recommend it, but you can yeah. touch one of the pins and you're fine. If you touch both, it's bad. So as you can see, there's no problem in grabbing any of these terminals. You're yeah. not gonna get electrocuted. but. You will if you grab a red and a black, so don't do that. No. And also, when you're working your own batteries, you're checking, you know, you're 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 adjusting the bolts, or you're doing any work, you're probably going to have a metal tool in your hand, a wrench, or a, something like that, a socket yeah. wrench, and it's very easy for it to slip out of your hand, and you can see how easy it would be to land between these two pins. And if and if that happens, you get a pretty firework show, and yes. um, you can also permanently ruin your batteries and do other bad things. So when you're using um, hand tools, yeah. Keep a good grip on them, and when you're done using them, don't set them down here while you're working on it, because you can easily bump it. When you're done, set the tools over here, and then continue on with your work. Yeah, and also um, jewelry, metal jewelry, and watches, right. necklaces especially seem to be a pain. But yeah, take those yeah. off. Yeah, but there's no problem. Going, ah! no, just just oh, Jesus Christ. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> I know how, how old these batteries are and I know roughly what condition they're in, but just say you just bought a, a new boat and you, you're seeing these batteries for the first time, how would you determine what the condition is? Sure. Well, the first thing to look for um, is obvious things. Um, you look at the, at the case. Different things that can happen is um, the sides of the case, um, they can start bulging out. Um, that's, an, that's one obvious sign. Um, you look for cracks in any of the plastic casing. Uh, that's another sign of previous abuse. Um, if they're um, lead acid batteries, you can also um, maybe see um, water sitting on top. That could just mean that they were overfilled the last time the owner topped up the water. So it's not necessarily a bad sign, but um, if you see a lot of debris and moisture and things like that um, surrounding the batteries, um, um, that's definitely an, an obvious sign that there's something amiss. Yeah, um, I, on Britiken we had lead acid and I de damaged them and they were bulged out because yeah. I almost boiled them out, <laughs> which we'll come on to in a bit. There's no fixing that. <laughs> when, when you buy the boat, they're saying, oh, these batteries are one years old, these batteries are five years old. How can you determine if it, what they're saying is correct? Just by looking at them, unless there's obvious damage, um, there, isn't, there isn't necessarily a way. It's tricky because I've seen, on the boats that I've worked on, I've seen one-year-old batteries that were completely shot. Yeah. Um, and I've seen six-year-old batteries that were in very, very good health and probably had at least another two, three years left in them. Oh. So just by glancing at them, um, you don't know. Um, but just know that they can, uh, on average, um, a lead acid battery, you'll see anywhere from two to eight years. Mm -hmm. And it's a wide range because there's so many factors that can come into play on making them last a long time or not so much. Uh, yeah. When we bought Britikin six years ago, it had lead acid batteries. And stupidly, yeah, you know, it was like I was in a car, you put the batteries in, and when they finish, then you change them out. And they were lead acid. And I didn't realize about checking the water. And that's why ours were bulged out like that because yeah. they've got so hot and everything. And that 
damages them. But after that, I, I was really conscious on, about looking after them and I really looked after them. I checked the water level every month, every two months and just made sure that I kept them charged. I didn't take them down too far. I babied them after that. And when you consider they lasted another four years. So, you know, if you do see, if you do make a mistake like that, it doesn't mean it's the end of the battery, does it? Right. But, yeah. So, you've checked outsides. Is there any way that we can determine what the inside of these batteries are like? Because a lot of people advertise when they're selling about that they've got 800 amp hours. But does that mean that those batteries actually have 800 amp hours or it, could it be something else? It could be a lot less, mm -hmm. uh, depending on the age and how they've been taken care of. Um, so, if most of this discussion is going to be about lead acid batteries, yeah, uh, lithium or is, it, there's there's ways to tell as well, but it's kind of a different process. Mm -hmm. um, so, with flooded lead acid that um, actually has the caps on it, like you said yeah. in your previous battery bank here on Britikin, um you can check the water levels. That's the most important thing that you, that you spoke to. Um, first off is know that it's uh, sulfuric acid in there, and so you need to be careful. Um, generally, it's not gonna come sp spraying out at you. You only wanna check them when they're not being charged, mm -hmm. um, because when they're being charged, there can be some pressure and some yeah. bubbles and some evaporation, and you don't wanna um, have your face down in that. Mm -hmm. um, wear eye protection, uh, sometimes wear gloves if you want. Yeah. Um, you know, wear a long sleeve shirt or something, because if it splashes on you, it can it can burn you. First thing um, you should do if you have a lead acid battery, and it's not a sealed battery, we'll talk about that in a minute, yeah. um, is to check your water levels. Mm -hmm. um, in the past year, um, a couple of customers' boats I showed up on, they were complaining about low battery capacity. And I saw that they were not sealed, and so I checked the water levels, and they were bone oh, dry. dry. Um, and the owner didn't even know that they were supposed to put water in their batteries. That was um, me six years ago. Yeah. And so um, it was a it was a good learning experience, but unfortunately the batteries were bone dry, and um, it doesn't necessarily mean that your batteries are shot, nope. um, but it certainly um, means you've been very hard on them, and um, their life expectancy is probably reduced because of it happening. Yep. They might be shot. Um, there was only one way to tell, and it's to fill them up, cap them, um, and get them a good charge over a couple of days, mm -hmm. and start to watch them. Yeah. Um, the last customer I worked with um, that dried out their batteries, they're still using them now. Okay. Uh, I think I measured them and they were down to maybe 60% capacity, uh, mm. but they're, and they're only two years old. So oh. they took a hurting, mm -hmm. but they're gonna try to get another year out of them. Yeah. So if that happens, you're not screwed. You've learned your lesson. Yeah. So when you look at it, so this battery here is a lead acid, um, but it's sealed. And so we can't show you um, what, it's, what it's like where the water goes in. But um, on a, um, on a non-sealed, when you look in, you, you should see the water. And when you look on the inside, yeah. you, know, you look down there with a flashlight, a good bright flashlight, and you'll see the plates in there. They look like uh, radiator fins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you'll see that, and you need to make sure, at minimum, that the water is above those plates, above those yeah. fin-looking look mm -hmm. things. Um, and then there's plastic tabs that go down from the top of the battery yeah. towards the water. Yeah. And usually the bottom of that plastic tab where they go down is kind of the full level. level. So in between the top of the plates and that plastic tab, is you're, okay. you're, you're in a good range. Yeah. Yep. Use distilled water. Um, you can get it at any, gro any grocery store. Um, you also find it at Chandlery's. Um, if you're going to pay maybe a dollar or two extra at a Chandlery. But the beauty is, is that when you buy it at a Chandlery, usually it'll come in a certain size bottle with a cap that flips open and has a small hole. Mm. And it usually you can get it almost sideways and the water still won't come out. It's a squeeze bottle. And I find that when you're using a, a distilled water from a, from a grocery store, um, you need to get the funnel out and it can yeah. be a little bit I messier. I used to put it into a jug, put the big funnel out and right. do it that way. Yeah. yeah. So if you can find it at the Chandlery and it's not too expensive, you can save all of that, you can keep your funnels in the galley, and um, usually you can fill it right from that jug straight okay. away and it saves time and mess. So. Yeah. But definitely, distilled water or battery water. Yeah. Uh, at a hardware store, at a marine chandlery, or a grocery store. Yep. Yeah. I understand these better than women. It's true. Mate, mate, it's a, it's mate I've, true given, I've, given up, I've given up trying. <laughs> Okay, so we talked about um, wet batteries. What about other batteries like gel, AGM, and lithium? How can you test those? Right. For flooded 
uh, like we've been talking about, you can use a hygrometer. Okay. It's an old, old yep. way to do it. People mm -hmm. are doing it for decades. Um, it's fine, but there's um, other ways that work on all other types of lead acid batteries. So um, uh, gel, AGM, and sealed um, lead acid. Um, and that would be um, something called a digital conductance tester. Mm -hmm. um, they've, they've kind of taken the place of hygrometers in a, in a lot of cases. And um, also you can use a load tester. It's a bit of a bigger thing and they, they, they do their, their measurements slightly differently, but they'll both give you a really good snapshot um, as to the health. Do you think that is an essential tool on a boat or just a nice to have tool on a boat? It's not essential. Um, I mean, they're, they're not that expensive, mm -hmm. and so if you, you don't mind spending 50, 100 bucks, um, that's kind of the range that you'll find them okay. in. Probably a basic ones, maybe more like $50 US. Yep. Um, but usually, if you're in a, if there's a marina or a, um, a fair amount of boats around, somebody will have one, yep. or a marine electrician will have one. Yeah. And it's a fast test. Um, it, actually, testing a particular battery only takes about 10 seconds. Oh, um, the, the, the most time consuming part of it is getting all the battery cables <laughs> off. Um, yeah. um, so with all the other kinds, um, you can use a load tester, you can use a conductance tester. Um, the first thing you want to do is fully charge the battery bank. Okay. Um, whether it's um, flooded or gel or AGM, there's no point in testing a battery for its capacity until it's been fully charged. So that doesn't mean, oh, my solar charger is done pretty good today. No, if you have a generator or shore power, really give them a full charge. Um, once they're fully charged and the system has gone into float, shut down the charging mm -hmm. and put on your, all of your house loads for a good 5, 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. Um, your refrigerators, your freezers, some lighting. Uh, put a load on them. Yeah. And that takes off something called surface charge. So the plates that's on the battery, they can get extra charged on the outside if you will okay. and it just kind of gives them an initial discharge to get them to a, um, a resting voltage okay once you've done that shut everything in your boat down shut your dc panel boards down shut your battery switches off and then you want to test each battery individually and so um, however you want to do that with the cabling you'll disconnect them so that each battery isn't connected to the others okay right and yep. then with that conductance tester or with a load tester um, you can go through and test each one um, to, to see the resting voltage. Um, in general, uh, about 12.7 volts is around 100% fully charged. Um, okay. 12.4 is around 50 or around 75%, and 12.2 or so is about 50%. And with any type of lead acid battery, you don't want to go below, certainly not below 50%. Yeah, yeah. Really, you shouldn't be going below maybe 60, 65% um, depth of discharge. Okay. That's one of the disadvantages of a lead acid battery over, yeah. over lithium, oh, which we'll just talk about later. Soon. <laughs> if you don't have a conductance tester or nobody around has one, and you don't have a load tester, yeah. um, but you still want to get a snapshot of how healthy your battery is, yeah. um, you can do it with a multimeter. Okay. Um, you still want to go through that same charging procedure. Get them fully charged, mm -hmm. then put a load on them for a little while like we discussed. Mm -hmm. And then once you've done that, disconnect everything, isolate each battery, and then you can do it with any standard multimeter. So yeah. you, you're gonna, we'll, do a, we'll do a video just on multimeters yeah. later. We'll go through the basics of all the different multimeter settings. Yeah, I think that's but, a good idea. But, but for this one, we're just going to put it on the voltage setting. Your multimeter might have a DC volts and an AC volts. Yeah. This one is the same one and it, and it sorts it out for yeah. you. But let's assume that we've fully charged and we've gone through that process of putting a load on it. Um, all we do is we take the red and the red and the black on the black. We're on voltage. And this is reading 12.6 volts. Okay. So if we had disconnected this, done a full charge and disconnected it like the process and we just read 12.6 volts, I would say you're almost fully charged. Yeah. It's about a 90-95% fully charged battery. Mm -hmm. So that would be the procedure. Okay. Why do you have to take uh, all the leads off of it? Right. If, if it's a large bank, um, you could have one battery in here that's not as healthy as the others mm -hmm. and it could actually be pulling the rest of the batteries down. Yeah. Also, you might think you shut off all of your loads but there might be something that you forgot about that's pulling a little bit of, that's putting a little bit of load on that battery. So it's just easiest. You kind of want to do it once and you don't want to have to do it again. So just isolate everything, eliminate variables, and do the test. Take the leads off of the batteries. Let's use this battery, for example. 
Um, on this one, uh, using a socket wrench would be easiest just because of access. You're not able to get a straight wrench in here. And also using straight wrenches are a little bit more dangerous because now the handle of the wrench is going to be sticking out and it can swing around and create pretty sparks. Um, so if you have a socket, just find the right socket for that nut, put on an extension, and um, you just loosen it up. And it's very good when you're doing it once it starts getting loose just to hold on to it. So if there's any tension on this, when, the, when it comes off the post it doesn't go swinging across your battery bank. Here on Brettykin it's, it's, it's boxed in and hopefully I've kept them all nice and secure. How would you secure the batteries in certain areas if they haven't got a box like this or what could you do? Right, good question. Um, there's two things really to speak about here, especially if you have a lead acid bank um, of any type, um, is to have an enclosure like this, whether it's a plastic battery box or it's a custom box like this, or you just took some marine grade plywood and epoxied it together. Mm -hmm. um, the enclosure is important because if you have a lead acid battery and one cracks or leaks, mm -hmm. that you've contained that electrolyte. You don't want sulfuric acid running through your bilges. Um, no. Big problem. Mm -hmm. And so the container that sits in is really important. Um, and also securing them. Um, so this container uh, keeps them quite secure in this direction and this direction. And once the securing lid is on, um, there's there's very little vertical movement. Um, the code says from ABYC that you don't want more than one inch of movement in any direction once they're in place. Yeah. So this is pretty close. Um, uh, uh, so battery straps are sold at most any chandlery as well as automotive stores mm -hmm. and things like that too and they'll loop through handles of your batteries and they, they strap down. They're usually nylon or something like that. Um, every battery installation is different. Mm -hmm. And as long as you're as long as you're maintaining a no more than one inch in any direction, and think about it, if your boat heels over, you get knocked down. Um, you don't want these things flying around. Okay, so this video concludes the first of three about marine batteries. In the next video, we'll be discussing the following: how to maintain your batteries so they last as long as possible, how to check that your readings on your panel are the same as actually what the batteries are. How to create a strategy on keeping those batteries as good as possible. How to check your power sources like solar are giving the power to the batteries that they're supposed to be doing. Please subscribe to our channel. Please subscribe to our channel to get notifications on up and coming videos. And if you like this video we always appreciate the thumbs up. Do you have any questions about basic things you should know about your boat's electrical system? Do you know how to troubleshoot those systems and are you curious as to when you should or should not call an expert? Get a copy of our free electrical systems audit for boaters so you can be proactive with your boat electrics which means less stress, fewer costs and no nasty surprises. Follow the link located at the top right corner or you can find it below in the description. Does it mean that they're, they're not recoverable? Um, it's but it's not a good sign. Uh, yeah, we'll have to do that again. Okay. What is beeping? I don't know. Is it a phone? It was this. Oh, okay! <laughs> <laughs> <That's all right. laughs> I'm sorry. Aaron! I was thinking, that's a new beep. That's a new beep. Because <laughs> <laughs> normally, I'm got, if I know what the beep is, I'm like, is that? But that was a new beep. <laughs>